ask one. Let's pray unto the Father God uh, with all our heart. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, in Jesus' name we pray. Father God, help us, Lord God. Help us to really know your truth. Let us know your will. Help us to speak by your will, Father God. I just ask that you please give us your word. Uh, I just ask that you please speak through me unto all of us. And Father, help us to really change, really change, to really repent from all our sins, all our wicked thoughts, all our wicked actions, all our fornications, all our pride, all our wickedness that we are doing. Father, forgive us of all our sins, Lord, and all our, all our hatred towards one another. Father, God, help us to forgive one another and love one another as you love us and really be able to cry for one another and with pain in our hearts. Father God, as we feel their hearts and pains, Father, help us really cry for them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, please help us, Lord God, and help us to be changed from your glory to your glory, by your grace, by your grace, by your power of your grace, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us, Lord, and all our thinking. Help us be pure in our thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak about the will of God. Uh, that the will of God is for us to really become like a little child. Little child. The world is just so much pride. So much people with pride. And this is wickedness. This is Satan's seed grown in full trees. It's just wickedness all over the world. Including Christians, including those who say that they know God, they have met God, that they have experienced God, that they can heal the sick, cast out devils, or, or even do miracles, powerful miracles. It's just too many people are filled with pride and God wants this to be addressed. That unless you convert and become as a little child. You shall by no means enter the kingdom of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 or 2. Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except you, Y-E, you, he said, you all, be converted and become as little children. You shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You know, even you can do all kinds of street, street preaching, you can do all kinds of, you know, church activity, working in the church, worshiper, whatever you do, if you're not humble, if you're not changing yourself and humbling yourself and get rid of all that wicked, dirty pride, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Because the devil is a father of all the children of pride. Leviathan, the devil, is the father of all children who are prideful. So, get rid of this pride. Get rid of this haughtiness, arrogance, anger, outbursts of anger and wrath. It's because many times it's out of the flesh. Many times, even though you might have some uh, righteous anger, whatever, whatever you say, you want to prevent yourself from humbling yourself, whatever you want to say to excuse yourself, you know, deep down inside, when you're like, screaming and yelling at people, when you're all, you know, looking them down with your eyes, it's all pride. It's all pride. It's all pride. I realized this when I, uh, when my body got sick, you know, recently, um, my children caught, caught uh, fever, high fever, and we were praying for them, and they got better after we prayed for them, and then all of a sudden, I got the sickness. I was like, oh, you know, why didn't I get sick? And so I prayed and not getting healed. So I guess I don't know what to do. So I just suffered along. I don't take any drugs. I don't take any whatever Tylenol, aspirin for this stuff. I didn't take nothing. I just like suffered. And you're like, you know, raw, right? And, um, you know, I realized something that I did to the children while they were on fire. 
that are literally burn like 39 degree, 40 degree, and I'll just kind of like pour like cold water in their head and just wash their bodies and stuff like that. And you know, they'll be like, ah, like screaming. I'll be like, hey, I'll just be, just be quiet, okay? Just trying to cool down your fever, this kind of thing, right? And I realized those. I didn't even understand how painful it was. I didn't understand my whole body was like an aching and on top of it, uh, if I felt any cold air, it was like super hot, like 38 degrees, like very, very hot day. And I felt so cold. And uh, you know, <clears throat> I wore, you know, long pants and, and long sleeves and all this kind of clothes to make me hot. But uh, anytime a slight, cold air from the AC because my wife would turn it on would hit me I feel so cold I would just like oh, I can't even touch that and, and if I try to you know wash my hand with warm water I would feel cold I was like oh, I can't even touch that and I was like man like uh, I was so harsh onto these kids and, 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 the, and the suffering people and I realized that if when I'm sick, I'm, I can actually sympathize and think for all the people that are sick in the world. Oh, they're going through even worse pain than I, what this is. Like even horrible, much more worse pain. And it's more easy to be sympathetic to that once you suffer into that stuff yourself. And and you know when when you say mercy. Right? Jesus wants us to be merciful. Mercy is feeling the people's pain and their sufferings as if you're in that place. You're partaking of the pain and the suffering. Not physically really partaking, but at least emotionally crying out for them because you feel their pain and their emotions. And, and really being for them, crying for them. That's mercy. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, right? And blessed are those who, uh, who are crying. Blessed are those who are in pain and agony, you know, crying for others, right? And they, they shall be comforted, right? But blessed are those who mourn, right? Those, those people who are more mourning, not for themselves. Because why would it be blessed? I mean, it's like, yeah, you mourn and then God, God, God touched you and, you know, comforts you because you're crying for your own self. Yeah, well, where, where is the reward in that? Though There is no reward. There is no reward really in that, except that you just got comforted. But where is a heavenly reward? Heavenly reward is like crying like Jesus for the people. Jesus wept for the people of Israel. And he wept for the people. He cried for the unbelief. He cried in tears and in, and in even sweat of blood for the sins of us, for us, for his disciples. He cried and interceded. He's always interceding for us in tears and in crying. Loud cries and loud tears unto him who was able to hear him. Remember Hebrews 5, 7? And, and, and not only people like that, Nehemiah, 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 Daniel, you know, all these prophets, they cried for Israel. They cried for people. They cried because of their brethren were being suffering and being killed and raped and ravaged and all these kind of things, bad things happening to them. And they cried. So, so, to really be blessed when you mourn is when you only cry for one another. Jesus gave us the greatest commandment, right? Was to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Right? With all your mind, with all your thinking, with whatever is in your heart, with everything that is in your heart. You're supposed to love God. You're supposed to put all your mind to God and think godly things. But the modern day Christians are so lukewarm. It's a Laodicean church age. And yeah, it's neither hot 
or a cold, but lukewarm. And Jesus warned me, I would rather want you to be hot or cold, not lukewarm, because I'm going to spit you out, I'm going to reject you. And all the people are so loving the world, the world is not crucified in them. They have not crucified the world, they love it. They love the things of the world, and they think it's all okay. It's just not okay. Just, they just become enemies of God. Whoever loves the world makes themselves an enemy of God. You want to be a friend of the world? You make yourself an enemy of God. Huh? You want to love the world? Then there's no love of the Father in you. You don't love God. You just don't love God. There's no crying out. You're not, you're not even able to shed tears no longer. You know, if it's, if it's very hard for you to cry, and not like acting, okay? We're not acting. We're not actors, okay? No, from, cry from the heart for other people. Not just because of your, your pain, but other people's pain. If it's hard for you to cry for other people and intercede for them, you, 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 I don't know if you do or not, but really, literally cry out for them in intercession with tears and, and tears of blood of Jesus, you know, if there's no tears coming out for them, your heart is hardened, hardened with sin, the love of the world, the pleasures of the world, the pride of this life. You're so filled with this abomination of pride and, and, and pleasure of this world. It's like you're, you have a dead faith. You have a faith that has no works, it's just dead. It's just nothing is there. You're not justified by works, okay, alone, right? But it's by faith, plus, plus, you're justified because faith, faith will produce works automatically if this faith is real and is alive, okay? But there's no, no nothing, no works, then it just shows you you have a faith that is fake, it's dead. It's, 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 it's bubbles, okay, pop, pop, finish, it's not real, it's not solid inside. You need a solid faith, you need a real faith, you need a passion, a burning passion, a fire burning inside, the fire that Moses had, the burning bush fire that when God was there, you need this fiery passion, but you don't have it. Something is wrong with you. You're not really baptized by the power, the fire of the Holy Spirit. You're not baptized, you know, fully in the Lord, but you have the world still in you. It's not crucified. It's not dead. It's not dead. So then that's why it's lukewarm. That's why your faith is always winning, losing, winning, losing, winning, losing. Turn down into the sin, out of the sin, into the sin, out of sin, into the sin, out of sin. What is this? What is this? Huh? And you're calling that real faith? Oh, I'm just suffering in faith. No, you're not. Suffering for faith is like Paul when he's beaten, stoned, you know, dragged into courts and places like that. That's suffering for suffering for faith, okay? Not because you're suffering with sin. That's just lukewarm backsliding, coming out, backsliding, coming out, backsliding, coming out, backsliding, coming out. This is dead. This is a lukewarm faith. And this is dead. No fire in it. There's no real thing in it. What is in there? You tell me. Oh no, I love Jesus. I worship, I praise Him. You know, like somebody uh, praise and worship this, this lady praise and worship God by, in her home by herself, dancing before the Lord in joy and worship for three hours. Three hours. That should be the normal thing if you're really on fire. And what happened? Just like in the days of X, she, she heard loud in, the, in, her, in her room, closed doors, I mean, loud wind noise. And then she got filled with the Holy Spirit. 
It's just so happy. The joy of the Holy Spirit. You know how we're supposed to rejoice always? Rejoice in what? In laughing at some fake comedy? Huh? And, and watching some movies? Rejoicing in that? Yeah. And you call yourself a real Christian? You're a Pharisee, man. You're a Pharisee. It's not real. The world needs to be crucified in you. You shouldn't be parting and thinking of the world. What car should I buy? Oh, how nice things I have. Oh, how nice my house is. Huh? All these fake prosperous preachers say all these, you know, oh, like, you know, oh, you know, being rich is being godliness. Oh, gain is godliness. Gain is godliness. Don't be deceived, my friend. Gain is not godliness. Okay? If you're rich and rich toward yourself, you will die and burn in hell. I'll tell you. Straight up. So you don't have to hear from nobody else. I'll tell you the truth straight up. If you love the world, you're going to hell. Oh yeah, you're going to hell. You cannot love God and love money. You cannot love pleasure and love God at the same time. It doesn't work. You are, you are, you're cheating on God. And God is a jealous God. And He'll destroy all those adulterous cheaters unless they repent and come back to Him. Repent means turning away. Yeah. All these rappers, celebrities say this and that, they gobbly, oh, got this and that, got that and got this and this. You don't know God. You don't know who He is. You, know, you, know, you don't know who He is. Stop acting. This is not an act. This is not some movie. This is real life. It's not a game. Okay? It's real. God wants you to be having a real faith. So change your ways. You know, when, when they say, you know, crying out for these souls, you have to realize in the days of Noah and days of Sodom and Gomorrah, only eight people, only three people got saved. And Jesus said in the last days, it's, it's, it's going to be just, just like that. And you have to see that many thousands of Christians professing Christ. I'm afraid not many are really making it to heaven. How many will be raptured? How many will be lifted to heaven? Huh? How many will pass the day of judgment when God judges all men's hearts and is filled with wicked pride, filled with wicked lust, filled with wickedness, uh, pornography, uh, sleeping with girlfriends and boyfriends like as if it's nothing cheating and lying you make promises and you don't keep you call yourself a Christian you call yourself a preacher you call yourself whatever street healer street preacher huh? the call of righteousness when you don't even keep a promise between legal things you sue one another huh? you, you, you take people to court with one another you who greed over money you are lazy and don't keep promises? How will you face the judgment? Judgment doesn't look at your good works. Okay? He sees the bad works and say if it's a sin, that is a sin. No matter what great things you did, okay, if you committed a crime, according to that crime, you're going to be punished. Not because you have so much good work. You're going to tell the judge, Oh, uh, yeah, I did steal, but you know, I've been going to church, right? You're still a thief! You lied and you gossip behind people's back. And you're going, yeah, I did gossip, I did sing in the choir, I sang worship songs to you, I prayed, I preached in the street. What does that have to do? Jesus said, I, don't, I never knew you! You who practice Lawlessness. I never knew you. And you know, what? I've been going to church. I've been doing a lot of good works. I've been doing ministry. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. I'm a street healer, street whatever. Huh? I proclaim the gospel. Jesus will say, I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. 
your lifestyle is practicing lawlessness, you better wake up. Because God will judge according to the wicked things that you have done. Now, how can you overcome these things? Mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Right? So, so mercy. Cry tears. Of course, of, of your, for your souls first. For your sins first. Repent of those first. Then also cry for the sins of others. For the people who are in trouble. For their souls to be saved. Cry and intercede for them. For their behalf. And then, of course, even for your enemies, even for those who despitefully use you and mock you and make fun of you and do wicked things to you, even for them. Cry out for them with tears. If you don't have tears, ask God to break your heart, make your heart soft and malva. Break this heart full of sin. Break it, Lord. Break this, break this heart into pieces and create in me a new heart. A heart that is soft, like a little child. Amen. You know, a little child, as he grows and grows and grows and becomes an adult, his heart gets hardened with many sins, with many hate, with many bad things. He gets hardened, and he don't cry anymore. 18, 19, he don't cry no more. 20, 30, even less. 30, 40, even less. 50, 60, maybe more, I don't know. Less than less. Okay? Unless you're humbled, you really won't know your real self. Ask God, Lord God, what is my sins? Humble me. Humble me. Be in His presence. Spend time with God. Stop being robbing God with tithes and offerings. Okay? Jacob tithed unto God. Jacob. This is before Moses. Long before Moses. Like 300, 400 years before Moses. Okay, the law of Moses didn't even introduce. Where did he get that from? I'm going to tie tenth. Where did he get that from? Where did Abraham get tithing tenth? Where did Abel and Cain got uh, offering uh, lamb and, and grains unto God? Where did they get that offering from? Where? It was written in our hearts. All things are God. Everything that you own is God's. You ought to give it to the Lord. It's not yours. When people say, this is my money. It's not your money. It's God's money. And you're saying that because you think it's yours. You, you're so prideful that you think it's yours. Your body is not yours. Did you make it? No. Then it's God's. It's your heart. Is that yours? No, it's God's. Your mind, is that yours? Yours? No, it's God's. Everything is God's. How can you say, this is mine? It's not yours. It's God. We are God's stewards to take care of these things. Hand it over to us. Okay, but it's not ours to begin with. It's the Lord's. My life, it, our life, is Lord's. When you made your own life, you gave it to your own self. Uh, you make yourself like all the atheists proclaim. Oh, you know, oh, I made myself. We're just here. I'm just stardust. Oh, I'm just uh, by myself. I made myself. You did? Oh. Then you have no God eternally. Then you'd be in hell. Because that's separation from God. That's hell. Okay? Just, okay, God said, okay, you, you know, I'm not going to force you into heaven. Huh? You, you don't want God? Then, then don't have me anything. And it's just hellfire. Away from God. Forever and ever. And just, what are they doing? We're not atheists. Ours. Everything that we have. Is God's. So give unto Him the honor. Okay? Because God says, Where is my honor? In Malachi. God is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Matthew 23 23. 
Jesus says, do not leave that undone. Tithing. He said, don't leave that undone either. I mean, more important is just in justice, mercy, but don't leave that undone either. Jesus said it, Matthew 23, 23, and it's finished. It should be finished. And also in, in Corinthians uh, 15 or 16, it says, in the first day of the week, the, for the collection of saints. Collection of saints is like, you know, they're collecting money from saints. Okay? Let it be on the first day of the week. Understand? They collected money from the saints. And they willingly gave, like, at the time, they gave 100%. They sold their house, everything. And people shared among equally. How wonderful is that? Oh no, but you cannot even uh, spend a dime, a 10% of your uh, income. You cannot even, oh, you take off all the tax first, all the costs first, and then from that you tithe. That's not tithe. The whole tithe is a tithe. Whole tithe means from the income check that you get without minusing any tax or whatever, from that is 10% is God's. That's the whole tithe. Bring the whole tithe on to me. It's not just tithe. The whole tithe. From your check, 100%, whatever if it's 2,000, without subtracting any tax, without subtracting tax, 200 is God's. Okay, understand? Understand that clearly. So you don't be called a robber of God when you go to heaven, uh, when, when he judges, like, you're a robber. It's like, well, I'm not a robber. Yeah, tithes and offerings. It's like, oh, I thought we we're not supposed to tithe. Oh, who said that? Oh, my pastor said that. Oh, well, your pastor is in hell. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. That might be how it might, well, I don't know. But that, that's about how it sounds like it's going to go. Okay? Because Jesus calls you not even a thief. A robber. And all thieves and robbers all partake in the third lake of fire, you know. The lake of fire. So, I hope you uh, don't become like that. Don't be condemned. The only reason why you don't want to give is because you think it's yours and you're overdriven with greed, which is partly of pride. Okay, greed comes from pride. Okay? You just want it to be better and bigger and fatter and, and, and more richer and glorious okay that's this cry greed and lust for pleasure it's all lust for life anyway uh, I just want to end it here and uh, let's pray to the Father with all our heart okay and let's intercede for the people and just worship the Lord every day worship the Lord singing and praising and lifting up your hands we worship the Lord, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you, Father God, for your word. I just ask that you please, Lord, help us to be led by your Holy Spirit and guided by your Spirit all the days of our life. Help us come into repentance and change our wicked ways, Father God, to love you and to serve you and to really honor you with all our tithes and offerings and with our life, Father God, with our time, Father God, with everything tithed unto you, given unto you. Live after this world, but let us be able to crucify this world that is within us. Crucify it unto death, the world that is within us, Lord. All this pride, all this lust, all this love of the money and world. Father God, I ask that you please crucify us in that manner. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father God. Help us to really live for you and intercede for the saints in tears and cryings and mourning for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We give you all the praise and glory. Thank you, Father God. Please, the Lord, save us and change us. And help us come into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, by the grace of God. In Jesus' name, pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah.